Hello and welcome to Portworx Lightboard Sessions. My name is Ryan Walner, and today we're going to be covering the basics, Portworx 101. So in this video, we're going to walk through sort of the basic architecture of how Portworx is deployed on a set of uh, Linux hosts and how it consumes and provides various levels of storage. So first, Portworx is delivered as a container image, meaning our software defined storage solution is a Docker run or Docker pull and then Docker run uh, on your system. So typically Kubernetes uh, and other orchestrators will simplify this aspect of running many different uh, container images on hosts by allowing you to define something like a daemon set uh, or a deployment to run applications. And in fact, Portworx runs as an operator or a daemon set on Kubernetes when you deploy it that way today. But effectively, the solution is the same and the end result is the same, is that a Portworx container is launched on every node that you want to provide or consume storage. And what I mean by provide or consume is that Portworx can provide storage by, con by looking at the available block devices on your Linux systems and creating a global pool. Uh, and then what I mean by consuming is that if you don't want a specific node to run as a storage node, meaning if you don't have disk available on that node, it can provide volume still, but just over the network. And we'll get into a little bit about what that means. Portworx needs a key value store. So typically this is etcd. In fact, if you run Portworx with under 25 nodes, we will run a etcd key value database for you on Portworx itself. But we'd like to show it in the diagram as its own entity because Portworx does rely on it for cluster metadata. So it's sort of the source of truth in terms of volumes and, and nodes in the cluster. So this is our network here. Portworx can configure a single network or a data and management network, meaning that you can separate IOs and control plane um, traffic. But all nodes on the uh, Kubernetes and Portworx cluster will do one thing. They'll go ahead and look for available storage on the node. This available storage can be direct attached disk, meaning SSDs or NVMEs on your host. So it could be an SSD or it could be an attached block volume, something like an EBS drive. Uh, even an existing storage solution, such as an array that provides a LUN. It doesn't really matter how the storage is available on the host, but when a block device is available, Portworx can go ahead and benchmark that drive meaning that it will test what kind of performance and latency is associated with that drive. It will classify that, uh, that drive and it will create an aggregate pool, meaning that across all nodes with the various levels of storage, what it will do is create an aggregate storage pool that is globally accessible by every node. So this is now your soft-refined storage pool that you can provision volumes out of. So that all happens at startup, right? You sort of give it the configuration. If you go to central.portworx.com, uh, there's a spec generator there, which sort of goes through some of this. You have to give it your versions of Kubernetes are running or the key value store. You have to select whether you're using block or directly attached volumes or uh, an external array that has block volumes available. Uh, and then it produces sort of something you can install. And when those containers come up and start running, that's when you get your globally available storage pool. 
And this is what containers then use. So if you run a container that needs storage, it will provision it out of this globally attached storage pool. The great part about this is that this container and this Portworx storage pool now provides container granular features, meaning that this container can say that it wants a replication factor of three. And what this does is it tells Portworx to make that data available on three of its hosts, meaning that there are three copies of this data so that if this node goes down or another node goes down, you still have an available copy. This is a container granular feature. There's also things like encryption, which allows us to provide sort of a, a key to encrypt that data on the storage pool as well at a per volume basis. There's a number of different features. I'm not going to get them all get into them all today, but these container granular features can be configured like snapshots, uh, IO profiles, classes of service, um, backup policies, schedules, those, those kind of things. And so Portworx provides sort of all of this on in a mechanism. At its core, this is what Portworx is doing when you deploy it to a set of nodes. And the benefit here is that Portworx is all software. It can use directly attached storage, cloud storage, or existing uh, storage arrays and systems. And it's deployed as a container image itself. So hopefully this gave you a sort of a sense of uh, Portworx in a 101 fashion, how it gets deployed and how it starts working and how containers can start using that globally available storage pool that it creates out of all of your different nodes. Until next time, take care.